Hello and welcome to this presentation on Common Core Math, specifically how you as parents and guardians can help guide and support your child as mathematicians at home. I'd like to start off with a quote from Einstein that I believe really speaks to the core of our Common Core standards. That is, education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. I believe that to be our principal goal as educators, we want our students to be able to think critically with a profound depth that allows them to transfer knowledge across subject matter, which will ultimately prepare them for their college and career experience. The new state standards represent a shift in the manner in which mathematics is taught. We identify these shifts as focus, coherence, and rigor. In the past, it was common to attempt to cram as many chapters as possible into a year before testing, the whole mile wide inch deep philosophy. Now with our current standards, we've been given the opportunity to slow the pace and focus on fewer topics, allowing for greater depth and understanding. Furthermore, there is a heightened attention to coherence or the systematic and logical connection of topics across grade level. What that means is each grade level builds upon its previous year's conceptual understanding. So in other words, every grade level is teaching 1 13th of your child's TK-12 mathematical journey in Arcadia. This means that the foundational concepts and skills introduced in one grade level are then built upon with greater complexity in coming grades. The progression of learning is deliberate and developmentally paced to grow with every advancing year. And lastly, the standards place a huge emphasis on rigor. We are placing careful and equal attention on conceptual understanding, procedural skills and fluency, and the application of knowledge to real world problem solving. As you can see by this slide, math looks and feels a bit different these days. For many students, teachers, and parents alike, there's an internal struggle happening as we transition from the old way of doing math to the incorporation of different conceptually based skills, strategies, and problems. In the photo on the left, you will see the old way, the way many of us were taught. It is a basic subtraction algorithm, which requires borrowing a 10 to get your answer 15. In the photos on the right, the newer way of getting the same answer, you will see two alternative options for solving the same problem. In picture A, you have that same problem, 32 minus 17, but we're gonna look at it differently and approach it differently. We are counting up from 17 to get 32. This is when I start to ask myself some questions. What do I need to add to 17 to get 32, as you can see in line one? Well, I wanna break this into parts that are easier to work with. Working with multiples of 10 are easier and faster for our brains to grasp. So in line two, I'm going to add three to 17 and that gets me to 20. A multiple of 10 that is easy to work with because I know that by adding another 10 will take me to 30, as you can see in line three. And then in line four, I simply need two more to get to that 32. The struggle comes when I need to add up the add-ends that got me to my benchmark numbers of 20, 30, and then 32. When I add those add-ends, and you'll see them in the pink rectangle, 3, 10, and 2, I do get 15. Similarly, in example B, we're using our conceptual understanding of working with multiples of 10. You will see that I have decomposed or split apart the number 17 into two add-ins, 12 and five. I chose these two add-ins because if I use the 12 and subtract that from 32, I get 20, which is again, an easier value to manipulate both mentally and on paper. And then I simply continue by subtracting the five and get 15, the answer all along. Now, were these two options as quick as the old way? No but the level of thinking, conceptual understanding of number sense, and the mental manipula manipulation that both example A and B demands far surpasses the rote skills needed for the solving of the algorithm. 
And this takes me back to the part of the slide's title, The Constructive Struggle. You can find an article on this topic by clicking in the words in blue. But the constructive struggle is a new way to think about the frustrations we may associate with mathematical learning these days. The struggle occurs when students are offered engaging yet challenging problems. The demands of one time-consuming problem will likely provide more learning value than a variety of shorter, more obvious problems. Lastly, as students engage in this constructive struggle, they learn that perseverance, in-depth analysis, and critical thinking are valued in mathematics as much as quick recall, direct skill application, and instant intuition. As we move on to the next slide, you'll see a variety of websites and or downloadable resources for you to review as necessary. Whether you're taking the time to simply educate yourself or trying to find tools that will assist you as you support your child at home, we hope that you will be guided through any struggles with these resources. From games and handy tip sheets to support strategies, all provide valuable insights for your benefit. For example, I'd like to draw your attention to the parent roadmaps. If you click on that blue link, it's gonna direct you to a new website from this Council of Great City Schools. And in it, you'll find various grade levels of your choosing. I'm gonna pick grade one, click on it, and it's gonna take me to a six page document that really outlines for any viewer some of the background information about Common Core and how educators are working to educate your kids. Also, you're going to see some of the standards that your child will be interacting with during that particular year. And what I think is really beneficial on these um, particular roadmaps is you're going to see the three-year coherent band. So you're going to start off with the grade your child is in, and you'll see what they did last year, as well as what they're going to be doing in the following year and how each grade level builds upon the next. And I think that's really important for our coherence piece in the shifts. You'll also see some examples of word problems, language of the discipline or the words that we are using in math. You'll also get a chance to see what are some um, things that you can do as parents to help outside of the school. And then finally, there are some additional resources that you could take a look at. And so we're going to go back now to the presentation. And again, I'd like to draw your attention to some of the websites. And most importantly, our Arcadia Common Core website is a wonderful site for you to go to and find numerous um, resources and tools to help better guide you through learning more about Common Core um, math as well as language arts. In slide six, we are going to introduce to you the standards for mathematical practices. In addition to the content, content standards, which tells what your child should learn, there are also mathematical practices. These eight standards for mathematical practices emphasize the behaviors your child will engage in as they interact with the standards. And if you click on that link, you'll see this screenshot takes you to five of them, but there are eight, and it shows you the mathematical practice as well as that practice in um, student-friendly language. And it helps students interact with the math that they will be working with. In addition, if you go back to the um, presentation, you'll see that asking effective questions in relation to those math mathematical practices is also very important. And if you click on that link, it takes you to a series of questions for each of the practices that will help you guide your students' thinking. So as you support your child in their experiences with math, it's important to ask these effective questions. And instead of responding with just answers, you want to help develop their thinking by asking these quality questions. And lastly, as I return to my final slide, since I began with a quote, I'd like to end with a quote. Might I suggest that if you want to give your child a gift, the best thing you can do is to teach your child to love challenges, to be intrigued by mistakes, enjoy effort, and to keep on learning. Thank you for visiting this presentation today. Please feel free to visit the Common Core link on our district's website.